6.45, this is the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. The news edited by Danushka Madhavala, read by Soundi Thavam. The President says Sri Lankan unity paves the way for rapid national development. Vietnam to share digital agriculture expertise with Sri Lanka. The Iranian Foreign Minister meets the President and discusses Persian Gulf's crucial role in broader Indian Ocean security. Sri Lanka's January consumer price inflation rises to 6.5%. The Navy apprehends a suspect with commercial explosives in Mana. In foreign news, death at Punjab border and farmers protest denied by the police. In sports, Afghanistan won the third and final T20 international against Sri Lanka. The 10th National Scout Jamboree held at the Korneswara Hindu Vidyalaya Stadium in Trincomalee yesterday. President Ronald Vikramasinghe in his address at the inaugural ceremony underscored the potential of Sri Lankans to steer the nation towards rapid development and fortify its security for future generations through unified efforts. Emphasizing the inclusive nature of the event, the President highlighted that participation in the National Scout Jamboree transcends divisions of caste and religion. He articulated that unity among Sri Lankans, spanning from the north to the south and from Colombo to Trincomalee, is pivotal in accomplishing shared objectives. President Wickremesinger pledged his support for the expansion of the Scout Association, noting its role in nurturing responsible citizens essential for the country. Furthermore, he announced the plans to facilitate collaboration between the Scout Association and the Ministry of Technology, underscoring the importance of leveraging interactions across sectors for national development. Themed Leadership for Change, this week-long National Jamboree held from February 20th to the 26th has drawn a crowd of 11,500 scouts and scout leaders from both local and international arenas. Notably, this edition of the Jamboree witnesses the participation of a delegation from the Girl Guide Association for the first time, alongside the inclusion of Cub Scouts, enhancing the event's significance. Vietnam's Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Min Hon Le, called on Prime Minister Dinesh Gunavardhana at Temple Trees in Colombo yesterday. They discussed on close bilateral ties and ways and means of enhancing cooperation in many spheres, especially in rural development and social empowerment. The Vietnamese minister thanked Sri Lanka for the support extended during the Vietnamese liberation movement. He said Sri Lanka was one of the first countries to recognize Vietnam immediately after its independence and unification. The Prime Minister congratulated Vietnam for the success of rapid economic development after gaining independence after a valiant freedom struggle. He praised the innovative methods adopted by Vietnam to successfully attract foreign investments and requested to share its experience with Sri Lanka for modernization of agriculture. Minister Min Hon Le acceded to the Prime Minister's request and added that Vietnam considers Sri Lanka as a special friend and his country could share expertise in digital agriculture and smart agriculture. Iran's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Hossein Amir Abdelhain, engaged in discussions with President Ronald Vikramasinghe during an official visit to Sri Lanka. The meeting was held at the Presidential Secretariat and centered on key areas, including the ongoing violence in Gaza and opportunities for enhancing bilateral cooperation. President Wickremesinghe reiterated the Sri Lankan government's firm stance on the Gaza conflict, emphasizing the immediate necessity for violence cessation and the urgent need for a peace settlement. He underscored the principle that any peace agreement must be inclusive and not based solely on the demands of either side. Additionally, the President proposed the establishment of a Palestinian state within a time frame of five years, ensuring the security of both Palestine and Israel. Highlighting Sri Lanka's strategic position in the Indian Ocean, President Wickremesinghe emphasized the nation's commitment to ensuring freedom of navigation, particularly in the Persian Gulf. He stressed the vital role of the Persian Gulf in the broader context of the Indian Ocean security. In response, Minister Amir Abdelain expressed Iran's dedication to fostering tourism to Sri Lanka and strengthening cultural ties between the two nations. He further conveyed Iran's eagerness to explore avenues for expanded economic cooperation with Sri Lanka. This news broadcast comes to you from the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. The Department of Census and Statistics revealed 
that Sri Lanka's inflation based on the National Consumer Price Index for January 2024 was recorded at 6.5% as measured by the year-on-year -year change. This is an increase of 4.2% compared to the headline inflation recorded in December 2023. Compared to December, the reported inflation for January was mainly due to the higher prices in both food and non-food groups, according to the DCS report. On a monthly basis, the year-on-year -year inflation of the food group went up to 4.1% in January and one from 1.6% 1 in December. The year-on-year -year inflation of the non-food group, meanwhile, increased to 8.5% in January from 6.3% in December. The contributions to the inflation recorded in January from the food group and the non-food group stood at 1.86% and 4.66% in comparison to December. The 26th session of the Joint Commission between Sri Lanka and the European Union will be convened today in Brussels. The meeting will be co-chaired by the Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Sri Lanka, Aruni Vijayavardhana, and the EU-European External Action Service Deputy Managing Director for the Asia-Pacific. The Sri Lankan delegation to the Joint Commission will comprise senior officials of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Attorney General's Department and the Ministry of Finance. The EU-Sri Lanka Joint Commission serves as a platform for dialogue and cooperation between Sri Lanka and the European Union, covering a broad range of bilateral and multilateral issues of mutual interest, trade and investments, development assistance, fisheries, education, counterterrorism, governance and human rights, Indo-Pacific and maritime security and environment. A special search operation carried out by the Navy with the police in the Pallemune area in Mana yesterday led to the arrest of a person with 650 water gel sticks, a type of commercial explosive. The arrest was made while the suspect was carrying them in a bus. The use of explosives of fishing poses a serious threat to marine life and can cause long-lasting damage to the marine ecosystems. Thus, the Sri Lankan Navy has been conducting regular operations to crack down on fishing using explosives. That concludes local news. The main news story is brought to you by Siddhale Pavedamahatma. The Minister of Public Security, Tiran Alas, emphasized his unwavering commitment to continue operations aimed at suppressing drugs, tackling the underworld, and preventing violence against women and children, regardless of any pressure encountered. Furthermore, Minister Alas disclosed that the value of drugs ceased during the Yukti operation, which commenced on December 17, 2023, amounts to 7.8 billion rupees. The minister made these comments during a news conference held at the Presidential Media Centre yesterday under the theme Collective Path to a Stable Country and came to you in the main news story. The main news story was brought to you by Siddhalepa Vedamahatma. On to Watchlight, the Colombo Lotus Tower Management Company Private Limited said that the Colombo Lotus Tower will be eliminated in red today as a mark of respect for and awareness on World Encephalitis Day. They said this initiative is part of the Encephalitis International's ongoing mission to raise awareness of this devastating neurological condition. The Kalama Lotus Star will be supporting this movement by joining the many international landmarks worldwide to mark this year's World Encephalitis Day truly remarkable and impactful. That came to you in Watchlight. Coming up, World News. Making headlines this morning, death at Punjab border, farmers protest denied by the police. UK aid supplies airdropped into Gaza for the first time. And pioneering European ERS-2 satellite burns up over the Pacific. A protester has died as farmers attempted to resume their march in India's capital after four rounds of talks with the federal government failed to end the deadlock. The 22-year-old's death was confirmed by Punjab's health minister and a hospital official. The farmers' union had earlier alleged the protester had died during the police action. The Haryana police, however, said no farmer had died during the protest. The farmers who are demanding assured prices for their crops have been clashing with the police who are trying to block them reaching Delhi. The last time they held a protest in the capital, they hunkered down at Delhi's borders for months. 
As a result, officials are trying to prevent a repeat, fortifying the city's borders with several layers of barricades and barbed wires. The UK has airdropped aid into Gaza for the first time since the war broke out after striking a deal with Jordan. Four tons of supplies, including medicines, food and fuel, were delivered into the strip on a Jordanian Air Force plane on Wednesday. Packages fitted with parachutes floated down to the Tal Al Hospital in northern Gaza. The UK Foreign Secretary David Cameron said the aid would save lives and keep the hospital running. The UK has until now only sent aid to Gaza by land and sea, but northern Gaza, a wasteland after nearly five months of war, is impossible to reach. The World Food Programme has suspended deliveries there because its convoys had endured complete chaos and violence, the organisation said. A European satellite that pioneered many of the technologies used to monitor the planet and its climate has fallen to Earth. The two-ton ERS-2 spacecraft burnt up in the atmosphere over the Pacific. So far, there have been no eyewitness accounts of the mission's demise or any debris reaching the Earth's surface. ERS-2 was one of a pair of missions launched by the European Space Agency in the 1990s to study the atmosphere, the land and the oceans in novel ways. The duo monitored floods, measured continental and ocean surface temperatures, traced the movement of ice fields and sensed the ground buckle during earthquakes. And ERS-2 specifically introduced a new ability to assess Earth's protective zone layer. The satellite's return was expected, although uncontrolled. It had no functioning propulsion system to detect its fiery plunge. Back to the headlines of the world news. Death at Punjab border. Farmers protest denied by the police. UK aid supplies airdropped into Gaza for the first time. And pioneering European ERS-2 satellite burns up over the Pacific. With that, we conclude this bulletin of world news and take a look at development news. The Interim Secretariat for Truth and Reconciliation Mechanism recently presented a copy of the draft Truth and Reconciliation Bill to the chief prelates of the Asgiri and Malvatu chapters. Dr. Asanga Gunawansa, the Director General of the Interim Secretariat, led the delegation. The most venerable Tibbatuave Sri Sumangala Mahanayaka of the Malvatu chapter and the most venerable Varaka Goda Sri Nyanaratna Thera of the Askiri chapter agreed to review the bill jointly and provide their comments and observation concerning the same. The Mahanayakas were briefed on the progress of the reconciliation process by the officials. That's Development News. Moving on with Sports News. Afghanistan won the third and final T20 international against Sri Lanka. The match was played as a day and night encounter in Dambula yesterday. Batting first, Afghanistan scored 209 runs for the loss of six wickets. In reply, Sri Lanka were able to only score 206 runs for the loss of wickets at the end of the allotted 20 overs. Afghanistan withstood onslaughts at both ends of the innings, first from Patum Nisanka and then Kamin Dumendis to close out a nervy three-run victory over Sri Lanka in the third T20I in Dambulla. It means that Afghanistan end the series on a high, securing their solitary victory at the last time of asking. Sri Lanka won the series 2-1. That's sports news. We take a look at business news next. Go ekakthiyana youth ikata Life ikat change ikata Niya meta set penna Aswa hagena dhaka puhida Habe karana Youth ikata niya meta set penna Friendship meta menna The all new NSB Ithrumitru account NSB I am a plan for your dream Business News Sponsored by National Savings Bank The safest place for your money Apple has advised that if an iPhone gets wet, it should not be dried in a bag of rice. Despite the technique's popularity, experts have long warned against it, with tests suggesting it doesn't work. And now the tech giant itself has published guidance telling users it could result in small particles of grain damaging their devices. The firm said people should instead gently tap out any liquid with the phone connector facing down and then leave it to dry out. Despite the increasing sophistication of smartphones, popular approaches for fixing them if they have been dropped in water remain rather unsophisticated. Apple has taken the opportunity to steer users away from several of them. That's Business News, Economic News up next. Business News, sponsored by 
National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. Go ekathiyana youth ekatha life ke change ekatha niyamet set penna. Aswa hage na dekhu puhi na hai bekarana. Youth ekatha niyamet set penna friendship ekatha menna. The all new NSP itro mitro account NSP I am a plan for your dream. On economic news, Google is racing to fix its new AI-powered tool for creating pictures after claims it is overcorrecting against the risk of being racist. Users said the firm's Gemini bot supplied images depicting a variety of genders and ethnicities, even when doing so was historically inaccurate. For example, a prompt seeking images of America's founding fathers turned up women and people of color. The company said its tool was missing the mark. that's economic news with a report the med department says that except for a few showers in the southern province and in the ratnapura district in the evening or night mainly fair weather will prevail elsewhere over the island misty conditions can be expected at some times in the western and sabragama provinces during the morning to conclude this bulletin of news a recap of the headlines The president says Sri Lankan unity paves the way for rapid national development. Vietnam to share digital ag- agriculture expertise with Sri Lanka. The Iranian foreign minister meets the president and discusses the Persian Gulf's crucial role in broader Indian Ocean security. Sri Lanka's January consumer price inflation rises to 6.5%. The navy apprehends a suspect with commercial explosives in Manar. Death at Punjab border and the farmers protest denied by the police. And Afghanistan won the third and final T20 international against Sri Lanka. With that we conclude this morning's news broadcast and it's right back to your hostess Geeta Anjali to keep you well entertained on a beautiful Thursday morning. Good morning Geeta Anjali and it's back to you.